Hello everyone, I'm bringing you another unboxing video today. We're actually unboxing three separate parcels here. And we're looking at some recently arrived East German kit. Again, very kindly sent over to me by my friend Tommy Richter. I bought these bits and pieces in Germany, shipped them to him and he shipped them on to me, basically from sellers who don't ship to the UK, which means I can get my hands on bits and pieces, which is otherwise rather fine, uh, which are otherwise rather difficult to find over here. So it's really as much appreciated as always, Tommy. Thank you very much indeed for your help with this. There's quite a lot to look at here, so we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at what's arrived. So here we have the first box of bits and pieces. I think this contains most of the smaller items. I think there's another box which I imagine contains the uniform bits. And then there's another one which is a longer box, which I know contains a tripod, which we'll have a look at. So as I say, most of the bits and pieces in here, I do know what's coming. Obviously, I've ordered these uh, these items from uh, German eBay and sent them on to Tommy, and he's kindly uh, posted them on to me in the UK. So again, much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed, Tommy. Your help with this is really greatly appreciated. So I'll move this to one side and we'll get some bits and pieces out of this and have a look at them in a little bit of detail. So one of the first items on top here, let's move out my blanket again. Uh, we have a first aid pack, which has various bits and pieces in it, a bandage, we've got safety pins. Uh, we have some dressings there, I think. And we have a little bottle here uh, with something in it. I'm not entirely sure, possibly an iodine ampule in there, uh, but I'd need to translate the list um, I'd need to translate the list on the front here, which I can do, or someone might want to do in the comments if you can read that. Uh, but this would be something I'll be talking about in the future anyway. Not something I plan to open, obviously. Nice to have one of these uh, first aid packets. Obviously, there's something else under the label here as well. Possibly plasters, I think. I think that's sticking plaster in there, possibly. But nice to have. I think these were issued generally, uh, well, they're intended for issue for troops actually going on active service. So if war had broken out and troops were actually they're going to be serving in the field in, in a combat zone. They would have been issued one of these. I don't believe they were issued for training and so forth, but nice to have. So put that to one side. Uh, something I wanted to get, I, this may be a modern uh, iteration of uh, East, an East German razor. So this is, I think, razor blades included there. As you can see, they certainly are more modern. But this is the same sort of type of razor you'd see, uh, a cheap plastic razor. Uh, produced in the 80s in East Germany, there were different designs, some of which had metal parts to the, the head, plastic handles and so forth, but this is the cheapest variety. I forget the name of the brand off the top of my head, uh, which is terrible. This, As I say, this may be a modern production provided with these blades, but it's the same type. It's from the same mould, presumably, or, or very, very similar. Uh, so that's nice to have. I do have a golf razor already, but I wanted one of these longer handled plastic razors and uh, finding them in the original boxes and so forth now is, is quite difficult. Uh, they were around for a time, uh, but I've come to sort of collecting East German bits and pieces like this a bit late, really. Uh, and this is either a modern production or just old stock that's been repackaged with some, some blades for resale. Uh, either way, it's the same pattern. So it works well from my point of view and collecting for uh, sort of soldier small kit and so forth. In connection with that, I'll have to dig all these out individually and put them in my hand to bring them over. We have a whole load of unopened razor blades, as you can see here, chroma. I won't put all these down, but they're still in the cellophane there, as you can see, um, still with the, the little pull tab there to open them up. And these were certainly provided. Oh, hello, Apollo. Are you coming to help? Yes, very good. Uh, these are uh, still in the cellophane, as you can see, and there were a set of these being sold all together. So I bought several. I'll probably move some of these on as I don't need all of them. We may have the cat as a fixture uh, through the rest of the unboxing, which I don't think is a problem. I don't think it's going to cause an issue. So he can stay there. The next thing we have here in connection with that again is some shaving cream, a tube of shaving cream, as you can see here, which is uh, nice to have. Uh, I don't actually have uh, a tube like this already in the collection. I have some shaving soap. I don't have shaving cream, so uh, this is nice to have. I have a stick of shaving soap, soap, so it's nice to have a tube of shaving cream to go with all that sort of stuff as well. In connection with that, we have here a shaving mirror, as you can see there. Um, on the back of this, we have the manufacturer's label, the factory and the details there, and obviously the price at the bottom, 74 Fennig. So a little uh, fold-out travel shaving mirror, which is a, a nice little thing to have. Very cheap, but about three euros, something like that. So pleased with that. We have some more Police shoulder boards here, Vox Polizei Bereitschaften shoulder boards. Uh, and these are just, hey, 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 no chewing. <laughs> these are something I, I wanted. I have a set of these already, um, but uh, they have the staff for the next rank up. And I forget the rank off the top of my Oberwachtmeister, I think. 
uh, and so I wanted these without that star. So just nice and cheap added to the, the bits and pieces being sent over. And also Volkspolizei here, we have the service chevrons for a uh, professional member of the Volkspolizei Bereitschaften there, as you can see. So worn on the cuff of the uniform, of course. The next thing to look at here is a helmet net. This is an unissued helmet net, as you can see. And this has the later example with the little metal clips that go around the rim of the helmet. The idea behind getting this is I will eventually fit it to a para helmet when I can get one up to the Polish design of, of parachutist helmets. So East German helmet net to go around that as used by the uh, MVA Fallschirmjäger. So we have that there. Again, just a, a small item that was made sense to throw in with all the rest of the stuff that was being sent over. Another item for my collection of East German cassette tapes from Amiga. And this is Supertramp, Breakfast in America. So again, another Western band, but with the, these cassettes being produced in East Germany by the Amiga record label. So uh, nice to have. Uh, just something I've collected a few of these different uh, items, uh, from a few of these different cassettes from different bands, all produced in East Germany, but uh, from uh, Western bands, as I say, just from that point of view, quite interesting uh, to see these uh, records produced in cassette form. And I, I like uh, cassettes, I have some old cassette players, I quite like to get an East German cassette player at some point in the future. Uh, but this, uh, a nice addition to that little collection of uh, cassettes. Little paper wrap here with something in it. We'll have a look what's in here. And oh yes, we have some gold stars for use on uh, the shoulder boards. So these are rank stars and you can't have them. Have you got one there? Oh dear, come here you. No, oh, it's not a toy covered it. Um, Apollo is still a kitten and so everything is a toy and uh, he is getting better with uh, not jumping on tables and so forth. Uh, you can't have it. You cannot have it mister. Not. That is verboten. Nine. Okay. There we go. I will persevere. I'm not shutting him out of the room. The next thing to look at here is a shirt and one of the grey service shirts. And this has a size 40L, which is, I believe, my size. I've previously had 38L, which is a little bit, uh, sorry, um, a 40N, excuse me, which is the, the normal length. Uh, 40N is a little bit short for me in the, in the arm, so hopefully 40L will be uh, the appropriate size. I have another shirt in that size as well. A little bit trial and error there. I knew what the sizing was, and, and 40 is the correct neck size, but I did need the slightly longer size uh, for the arms, it would seem. Another interesting little item here, uh, this is a bottle used, I think these were used for both beer and soft drinks from what I can make out uh, in East Germany, brown glass bottle as you can see. Uh, I have I a plan to buy some uh, original labels from German Dot Militaria and I may even uh, put something in this and put a cap on it to sort of replicate a, a, a bottle for display, um, a soft drink bottle for display, that's the idea. Uh, various different brands of, of locally produced cola and so forth, so I may do something like that with this. Um, you can get the caps and little um, tools to put them on, I believe they're a standard sort of size, so I may actually be able to refill this just with uh, something that's not going to go off, um, that looks like cola or something like that, put a label on it, put a fresh cap on it and have it for display. Uh, that might be something I'll do with that. Again, wasn't expensive, so nice to have. We have a couple more uh, shaving or, or sanitary items here. So, uh, we have uh, a couple more bathroom items, I guess you could say. We have uh, razor uh, sham, so again, razor foam there from Ferrena in a spray can. Again, I think these are quite late 80s uh, when these were, were produced. Quite expensive as well, so five marks, 95 fennig there, as you can see for the price. And then the spray deodorant is 10 marks, so quite uh, quite expensive items compared to some of the other things you'll see. Uh, but I was very pleased to pick both of these up. Uh, I think that's ER, so Air. I don't know quite how that would be pronounced, but that's the brand for these. And you can see the razor cream has a purple uh, sort of branding colour to it, and the, the deodorant has a green. Um, but a set of those there, they did come from different sellers, but uh, see storage dirt and so forth on them. But uh, otherwise, interesting little bits to add to the collection. Ah, replacement item here. So I bought previously some of these earlier uh, MVA gloves and they didn't come as a pair. So I now have a, a right and left pair of these. Uh, they're seen used as work gloves later on as well, um, which is, is quite nice. So they're useful from that point of view and just a useful bit of the, the earlier um, sort of uh, 
uniform items, the cold weather items, you can see they are lined inside, as you can see there. Uh, later, these would of course be replaced with the, the Strecatarn camouflage uh, leather palmed uh, gloves that we're probably all familiar with. They're very common to see, very easy to find. Uh, these are the earlier examples of those, basically, or the, the progenitor of them. Another thing in here, I think this is a snowsuit. So this is something we won't really be able to look at here in any detail, but this is a, an oversmock, uh, a snow uh, camouflage oversmock uh, to be worn over the camouflage uniform. Quite commonly seen rolled up on the back of the belt uh, in the winter months for wear over the winter uniform as required. And of course, worn to some degree as well when it was snowy as snow camouflage. So that's not something I can really unroll and show you laid out on the blanket here. It's something we'll have to have a look at on the mannequin at some point in the future and no doubt it'll feature in kit recreations as well. So we have the snowsuit there and we have the final thing in here. We have another pocket calendar. If I can get this out. It's been put inside. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. It's been put inside a little wallet attached to a, attached to a postcard for safe safe shipping. So this is from 1987, as you can see here. Neue, De Neue Deutsche Baron Zeitung. And you can see there. So just the, the illustration on the other side. And uh, just in addition to that little collection of uh, pocket calendars I have, uh, which all have sort of different, I've seen some of those in a previous video, sort of advertising for various products. I think advertising for the Army Museum in East Germany, various other things. That's just in addition to that little collection. That's everything from this box. So we'll move on to the next one, which has the uniforms and everything in it. So we'll have a look at some of those now. So in the top of that box, we actually have another smaller item. And it's a copy of Army Rundschau from December 1988. And this has a, a Grinstruppen sort of uh, interest uh, from me. Uh, that's the main reason I wanted to purchase this article inside dealing with Grenstruppen. Obviously, this, this is a cover uh, with the green and the various illustrations of, of Grenstruppen in various different roles. So nice to have, and this will be good to have a flick through. Rather brilliant uh, colour uh, night shot there uh, with a T-55, I think. Um, obviously, the, the tracer in the sky there and the uh, muzzle flash. This uh, sort of bursting, some sort of bursting... Uh, munition there on the right hand side so hopefully you can reduce the glare a little bit but that's a rather excellent central illustration there as you can see and uh, it'd be nice to have a flick through this i do have some copies of army run show i like to pick up another copy every so often to sort of add to that collection i'm not going for a full set of them obviously uh, but it just uh, well i say obviously i'm sure there are people who collect these obviously who do want to make a full set i like to sort of have an illustrative collection of them from different years uh, for use with displays and so forth, and also for, for interest, the articles in them and so forth. So we have that there. We have another 40L shirt here. As you can see, this is a white service shirt, uh, with the parade uniform and also for use in other situations as well. The, uh, I think that the uh, Kampfgruppe and Arbeiter class were issued white shirts. I don't think they wore their civilian white shirts, so this is useful for that as well. Um, we have this here still in the original packaging. That's one of the problems with these. They all seem to come in the original packaging and I'm, I'm then loath to remove them from the original packaging. So we'll see. I may see if I can find uh, shirts that aren't, uh, that have been used uh, to, to wear rather than unpackaging these, but we'll see. Um, there are plenty of them around still, but I'm, I'm always loath to remove things from the original packaging uh, as a collector. Uh, it's always rather a difficult decision to make. The next thing we have here are a set of the uh, Vox Polizei breeches, uh, which I, I had already, uh, but these are in size M48. The ones I bought from the Netherlands, the seller said he had made no differentiation between M48-1, M48-0, M48-2. Uh, the dash one number means it's sort of one size increment up from M48, so slightly bigger waist, which means they're too big for me. So I was very annoyed with that. The, 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 uh, Difference in the sizes is quite well documented and quite well known. So the fact the seller didn't know that uh, and, and just said, well, all the things that we list as M48 can be any, uh, you know, have any dash whatever after them in, the, in terms of sizing was quite annoying, really. So you could end up with an M48-2 and you'd be have something way too big for you. Uh, I believe they do exist. But anyway, or M48-0 and uh, they'd be too small. But anyway, we have here again an issued pair with the tag on, but I do intend to use these. So that tag will be coming off at some point, but uh, we have those there. 
next thing uh, on the topic of the sort of this complements the the uh, snowsuit we have a 1980s winter uniform here again difficult to show you uh, in this particular format but we have a padded winter suit here I think this is M44 I tend to wear M44 in the uh, field service uniform and then M48 in service uniform uh, probably should all be M48 but M44 is a little bit easier to get hold of for field service uniform a little bit cheaper uh, because it is a smaller size and I do fit into it quite well so we have that there the jacket Ooh. And the trousers. I already have sort of 70s uh, version of this. So it's nice to have the 80s version as well. At some point, I'd like to pick up the, the slightly earlier 70s, 60s version, which is in a plain grey colour. That would be good. Uh, but uh, for the minute, I've got those two sets. So it's nice to have the, well, I do now have the 80s set here as well. So that's nice to have. I think there's something else in here. Ah, yes. So we have the uh, holster here, or one of the examples of the holster, for the, I think it's the PM63, but the RAK, the rack, which is the, the Polish, I want to say Polish. Oh dear, I should have researched this before I, I opened all this up because I knew this was coming. The Polish machine pistol, the personal defense weapon, basically quite infamous. Uh, it operates like a pistol with a moving slide, uh, but it is a fully automatic uh, submachine gun, essentially with a folding stock, um, but very, very small, very compact. It has a small folding front pistol grip-ish thing not really a proper pistol grip. It's, uh, yeah, quite an interesting little weapon. They were used by the Volkspolizei. There, photographs, there are photographs out there of them on the range with these, uh, the Volkspolizei Bereitschaften specifically, I believe. And of course you had um, the uh, anti-terrorism unit, which the designation of which I forget off the top of my head. Um, the special, special, special Service Police Unit, anyway, who did anti-terrorism, uh, carried out anti-terrorism operations. Uh, certainly there is some good footage of them very late on in 1980s, early, well, around 1990, uh, in training using the, the pistol, and this holster is designed for that pistol. So you can see as a holster it's huge, uh, but the, the rack is somewhat bigger than a normal pistol, but it does also serve as a machine pistol. I think there's provision here for, I think that's for a spare magazine on the side, possibly for a cleaning kit though. I'm not entirely sure on that. I'll have to look into it. Uh, but this is a holster for one of those. So I don't have one. I don't know if I'll ever pick one up, but the holster interests me. And I may ask, I, I do know I have friends who have, have an example, a deactivated example, which I might ask if I could borrow at some point uh, to, uh, to recreate a set of kit. So uh, this has both a shoulder strap and belt loops, as you can see here. And the idea was it would be both carried on the belt and then this would also be worn Sam Brown style over the shoulder to support the weight. So you have uh, that uh, sort of dual function there. The, I think the shoulder strap It's a little bit stiff, so uh, this has been in storage for quite some time, I would say. Hard to find, they are not rare by any means. Uh, nice to make the creation of that kit as seen on the range uh, with the uh, Vox Polizei Breitschaft and actually in service uniform, so in the green service uniform with helmets with these on the belt uh, on the range, uh, basically uh, having a range day practicing. Uh, so, as I say, uh, that's a, an interesting addition to the collection, I think, and, and quite an unusual bit of kit. They're not hard to find, but unusual from uh, the point of view of a, of a holster for one of these machine pistols. So, have a look, look at that in more detail in the future. And then there's one final thing to look at, which I shall grab now, and we'll have a look at that. So, I've zoomed out and brought the box in for this one. We can see down here we have a uh, the tripod and something else. I've just opened this up, so let's take this little fella out. So. <laughs> So I don't think this is for me. Um, let's have a look here. Best wishes from Denmark, Uncle Thomas. Well, that's very kind of you, Tommy. Thank you. This is for Robert. Um, obviously, we've uh, our son is now three months old, so he will soon be at the point of uh, enjoying soft toys like this and, and interacting with toys, playing with toys. So that's lovely. Little Fox, very sweet. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, to add to his growing collection of soft toys, that really is lovely. Um, not many babies in, in the UK probably have soft toys from Denmark, so that's very kind of you, Tommy. Thank you very much indeed for that. Very sweet. So uh, We'll have to come up with a name for him. Uh, so we'll put him to one side. What I've purchased, a very kind gift from Tommy there, what I've purchased is a tripod. And the reason for this, this kind of tripod, I spotted on German eBay 
Uh, they don't come up all that often. Uh, this is the kind of wooden camera tripod used by the Grenztruppen in various situations. So the Grenztruppen, uh, the Border Reconnaissance Officers, operated uh, in, in sort of various different roles. One of them was operating from hides, uh, looking out over uh, the Federal Republic and taking photographs of military operations and obviously the Bundesgrenzschutz on the other side of the border. And they operated from uh, hides similar to what wildlife photographers and so forth use. They would also carry out photography of that nature from watchtowers as well, using these tripods. Obviously, you could often have very large telephoto lenses attached to these, where the, the lens screws directly onto the tripod and then the camera attaches onto the lens once it's fixed in position. And these were also used for what was effectively the cl closest analogy I can come up with is crime scene photography. So recording escape attempts or successful escapes, uh, the cameras would be used with tripods to get nice clear photographs and these tripods were used. This is the, the type of tripod which shows up in footage and photographs. Uh, there's a fantastic piece of footage on YouTube called Grenzauf Clara, which, uh, Grenzauf Clara, excuse me, remembering the umlaut. And that uh, shows these tripods in use for both of those purposes, operating uh, to photograph uh, the goings on on the other side of the border and also for use in that sort of crime scene scenario, I guess you could say, in photographing the escape attempts and, and the aftermath of that, the, the damage done to the, uh, the uh, border fence and also uh, footprints left and so forth. So nice to have one of these. It really fits in with that collection of sort of Grenz Trooper Camerons, uh, cameras and so forth that I have. I would like to get one of the very large uh, 500 millimeter lenses that were used for long range photography when photographing things over in the, the Federal Republic. And uh, that will make an excellent display item going forward. As I say, I haven't as yet uh, been involved in a public display of East German kit. I would like to be in the future at some point if the opportunity were to present itself uh, going forward. So uh, this will all fit in with that. And obviously it makes for good content for the channel anyway. So very nice to have. And it formed part of that collection of various uh, sort of cameras and camera accessories in relation to the Grenztruppen uh, of East Germany. So uh, that's uh, the last thing that's arrived. I think that's everything. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. Obviously many of these bits and pieces will be covered on the channel in more detail going forward as time permits. If you'd like to see those videos and you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button, and that will of course alert you when I upload future videos. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.